Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my YouTube channel and here we are talking about Udemy clone application. So in this video I'm going to do two things the architecture discussion okay which we already did I'm just kind of going to streamline it and then we are going to do the schema discussions like okay how we are going to divide this business into multiple services and what are the core tables like in the on the combined whole view what are all what are all different tables we are going to use in the RDS? We might choose a different schema and different technologies to store the database. Like uh, you can use a MongoDB, or you can use a DynamoDB, or you can use RDS, which is Postgres and SQL. But this is going to be simple architecture. Here, what do we have? We have a NestJS admin dashboard, and this is the React app, and both are going to use this auth zero. So here is our auth0 third party service we are going to use to manage our users and this next js is going to use next auth it, it is nothing but a library a famous famous library to do the authentications for the ssr application server side rendered application and this is going to use this auth0 similarly this react also going to use auth0 and once you do the login with auth0 it will give you the token back I mean the authorization or authentication token. Similarly, the next auth will be able to manage the session between the client side components and server side component for the next JS application. So that's the advantage of using the, the next JS uh, the admin dashboard for the Udemy clone for the for the publishers who are publishing their content. So they should be able to change the content, change the module, change the course title, and all those things. They should be able to publish their the brand new course. All those things are possible through the, the dashboard app. This is the end user app, which is udemy.com. Right here, you can say udemyclone.com or anything you want to say. Because it's not official, right? We are just building an official clone of the Udemy. So this is going to use React. Next, yes, Auth0 is like a centralized. So we won't face any issue like, OK, Next auth is also using auth0 and managing the token uh, processed by auth0 and the same token I think we can use to access these APIs through the proxy gateway. And this is just our Node.js proxy middleware we are going to use. That proxy middleware would be able to redirect our request based on the path API we even upload. Okay, I know this is going to be upload service where user can upload either a file, either image, either a particular video or a particular module for the course course service which is going to be used by mostly this admin service where you are actually publishing course you are creating a modules and let's say I want to create a simple course HTML introduction so that will have some subsections okay HTML HTML5 for beginners let's say and then I will create HTML introduction then HTML tags HTML uh for uh, for building html layouts html layouts right and then uh, how html dom and then some videos about dom then a uh, lot more apis lot more web apis like window api alert apis and all web apis that can be a separate module then we have a category service category service is only going to provide us all the different categories like okay i have a development uh, devops business all these are core categories then there can have be a sub subcategories then subcategories can have a like programming then uh, after programming you can have html5 javascript node.js ruby python and all right then user courses user will be just navigating to the application buying courses and enrolling for the courses because even if the course is free you have to enroll it so we can track okay uh, this is the uh, the course contain course creator and these are the number of uh, uh, students who enrolled for that course so we know all the statics even if the course is free or course is paid then it comes to the payment service order service and then uh, feedback service where users should be able to publish the feedback uh, about the, the reviews and feedback comments and all so that will be managed per courses so in the category you have a core categories subcategories and then courses like html5 i created html5 course i should be able to buy it if it is free or i should be able to put uh, some stripe payment if it is a uh, paid then i should be able once i'm i'm going through all these courses we also need to track the progress based on the user clicks 
So if you are clicking on each and every module, we need to send that appropriate events that should be able to track the okay user has completed the 50% of HTML5 introduction course. Okay, so that will be helpful to do the all these kind of analytics and all and this is the really core business how we are selling our courses for the whole Udemy clone. Okay, so let's get started. Now what we will do is we will discuss the database schema for the different services. First, let's target three services. Upload service, we are going to use a cloud environment for it. Course service, which is going to be help you to create a courses. Okay, you can create a courses, modules, videos, descriptions and all these will be structured. Then categories should be a core. We can have a single table which is managing these relationships and creating a tree of uh, categories like okay development then there is a programming inside that inside of programming there are 10 different programming language so these are like a tree structure in the rds user courses whatever user is buying or uh, enrolling all these things payment service feedback service and we'll keep adding the services because this is what i see uh, based on the business domain i see all these services but they may be keep growing and this is just a HTTP REST API proxy, which is going to be accessed by these either uh, Next.js APIs. Next.js server side will hit these APIs and we will access it. Or we are going to expose this token to the client side component also in the Next.js so they can also hit these APIs directly. So it's, it's going to work in both these ways. Okay, so let's get started and uh, let's spin up our uh, first we will just discuss about the database and then we will spin up our uh, baseline code that is going to be still the same i'm going to use same mono repo setup with the pnpm workspace and nx in the pnpm workspace we can have these reusable packages and all these services which we are going to build upload service core service category service user service uh, payment service so it's like already i have uh, some structure created now i'm just going to give you some overview because it's like the same code I'm writing again and again and I don't want to spend another one hour just to explain this code. Okay, these are simple docker compose file, zest file, package json, pnpm workspace yml which is talking saying that okay we can have a workspace using these folders packages, applications and infra and inside uh, applications you can have all these different applications cart service, course service, order service, gateway service uh, udemy.club and user service all these different applications packages whatever the reusable package you see we are going to use aws services aws s3 database send grid twilio uh, logger config authentication with the auth0 all these packages will come here and then these are just like a common dependencies and common configurations which i have pushed to the top like commit lint husky and uh, prettier all these uh, common packages also move to the top. If you see this package JSON, we have Jest, Husky, NX, Prettier, TSJS, TypeScript. And for conventional commit, we are just using this conventional commit gen and uh, some ESLint uh, plugins, ESLint modules. If you are enabling the ESLint, then it should be able to check your code. So there is a ESLint parser for React, Next.js, Svelte. Well, we are not using. I will remove it okay this is pretty much so let's get started i will also give you a quick overview like uh, what all these dependencies and these folders looks like okay uh, it's all about how we are managing the workspace and in these workspace you can just provide the dependencies let's say i, I have built a database package and this database package which contains the connections with the using the type orm and connection with the database all can be isolated in the packages and can be used across any of this application. So all these are like just empty folders, empty packages, and this is a root level configuration. Okay, so the next thing we are doing is uh, designing the database. Okay, so we identified, okay, there will be uh, lots of services involved with this. And uh, all these database tables are not going to be in a one particular service. Because that is the beauty of this microservice architecture which we are using. So if you see this architecture, right? Category will have its own database and own tables. Courses will have its own database and own set of tables. Similarly, the upload service, which is uploading the files, referring uh, to a particular course, 
So course will have a modules and modules will have a lessons. So upload service will happen at the lessons level, right? And you can also upload the, the banner and the files for your courses. But mainly you will be uploading the content for your each and every lesson. So the upload will reference to that. Then course service, which is all about, okay, how we are managing the courses of all the users across the platform. And then enrollment service, user enrollment service, which is all about, okay, how user is purchasing the courses, how user is enrolling for a particular course. Then payment categories and all. What I'm going to do, I'm going to combine all of these and talk about the database design first. And then obviously we need to, we will keep evolving this database schema because this is like an initial design and then we'll keep adding on top of that. So this is just a platform where you can create your own diagram. And this is really nice. If you wanted to use it, this is really visualize your tables, relationship, one to many, many to many and all. So what all tables you think uh, we are going to have? So first of all, I will just try to specify table user. Okay, so users table will have ID, role, and you can say email. That is varchar and role authorization. What else we need to capture? Phone. If uh, user is providing that, so these are simple. I mean, we will uh, keep adding the things inside this created at updated at which is a timestamp. What else we can think or which we can put inside the, the users table, which is like, okay, you can also put a global count like, okay, in all, what all services user is enrolled with. So that's fine. Like uh, comment count, like where all user has added the comment. Courses count. Otherwise, we need to look into multiple tables and we need to find out, okay, these are the number of courses and the comments. I mean, we can just add them later. So this is a simple user table. Okay. Now let's talk about courses because user will be creating courses. So courses will have, okay, who is creating this, right? So there is going to be a user ID, which is going to be the reference. And then we can keep adding, okay, what all things we need in the language. Okay, what is the language of the books which you are creating? Price and all the attributes language price is published. Otherwise, you just created a course and you haven't published it and then approved because somebody from the admin will be approving your course before even publishing that. So, uh, so there is a description. And we can have a short description. And there can be a banner image, which we wanted to see. Okay, this is the banner of your course, HTML5 for beginners. Banner type. So this is description. Then there is a banner, then we have a title, which is over there. Okay, so this is the courses dot user ID is users dot ID. So this is how you associate the relationship. Users are going to have a primary key and the courses will have a foreign key. So what I did is reference courses dot user ID will refer to the ID from user. So it's like a many to one. Many courses will belong to a single user ID. And each and every courses are going to have a lessons. So I'm going to just create a draft design of our schema. Obviously it will evolve and we will change lots of things. And you can see the lessons is only about, okay, what is the title of a particular lesson? Let's say HTML5 for beginners. Then you will say first module is HTML introduction, right? So there is, we will have ID and content user ID. We don't need user ID here. We just need a content. Content is a worker and then uh, lesson title is published, approved. We don't need is published and approved because at the root level only we are publishing the courses. 
each and every lesson we don't need to approve and publish short description and long description short description descriptions and title banner and here you will also put a reference because there will be a files associated with the lesson or with the courses so here we can have another uh, table which is a uh, files right file will have a id and external id and this external id sorry for the noise this external id can be a primary key of the lessons table or the courses table because what happens is you are uploading the files files will belong to a course like some banner image or some thumbnails and all or a particular lesson like the video content or the course content so that we are going to add so these are our tables right users courses lessons i'm just zooming in and trying to explain uh, these things now the lessons the lessons will also have the relationship with the the course oh it's blur out uh, okay this is our users table courses table and then we will have another relationship with the lessons okay it's like again going to be the many to one so here we have a lessons dot ID. So there we need to have a course ID inside this. That is again worker. So lessons for course ID will be pointing to our uh, courses dot ID. Okay, and you can see the relationship established here. User courses lessons and then these files files can have a relationship with the both so file will have a external id this external id can be pointing to either a lesson or either a course or anything it's like a loose foreign key what i'm saying is because the files should belong to some entity so here i'm just saying is file dot external id will belong to uh, let's say courses dot id or it can also belong to lessons.id right so this has a relationship with everyone let's say you want to upload a user profile user photo user profile picture then it will be file.xml.id user.id yeah so it's like it's like a central a file manager service which is uploading everything are referencing external id to the these tables okay now what other tables i mean there are many tables uh, we can build enrollment enrollment means like uh, once user says okay i'm buying this course or i'm en enrolling for this course then we also need to track okay what all courses we user has enrolled So this is enrollment uh, table and inside enrollment we are going to reference two things uh, like who is the user and which is a particular course id right so it's like a user id here and the course id so we can track okay for what what particular course user has enrolled so inside enrollment we can also talk about okay once you did the enrollment you you will start adding the ratings also right you will also add some review comment some review comment and the price for that which you paid this is your enrollment table i will try to zoom this in uh let's see the focus okay increase the focus highlight okay now these are more uh, visible i guess okay enrollment so enrollment will have the same relationships now enrollment will have a relationship with the user table and the courses table so here i have enrollment dot user id which will belong to user dot id and enrollment dot 
on force id which will belong to force dot id okay so i mean our uh, the spider net is building and soon we will run out of the space so enrollment and then the user lessons because we also need to track the the progress on the lessons right so that we can just check the user lessons so here we have the say user lessons and inside user lessons we can just uh, do something like here lesson id lesson id course id i mean lesson from lesson we can get the course but let's keep it here so here we can track okay what particular percentage amount user has done a particular course then again so these are just like a, some of the services like user service user enrollment service courses service and i mean search can be applied on these courses and then we have a categories like catalog you can say catalog will be a user uh, course catalog service which contains the root level category right catalog contains the name of uh, the category name category and the parent id so what i'm going to reference here is this is my catalog catalog means what all uh, categories and subcategories we do have right catalog and just like icon and all the other things catalog will have a relationship with its own table so how we are going to define because here through this table we need to build a tree structure okay development has a programming category programming has a java c c plus plus node js and all so what i'm saying is catalog dot catalog dot parent id equal to catalog dot id okay you can see if parent id belongs to this id that means there's a relationship and with the help of this we can actually build a tree and this catalog is just like generic it can be residing inside a separate service which is providing the catalog and admin can upload update a catalog description particular technology description technology name icon and everything so this is a catalog service apart from that i see the the comment service feedback service so we can take and any kind of feedback from the user it can give feedback can be a separate service where you can take the text input feedback uh, checkbox the ratings and all sort of feedbacks so feedback will belong to a user so you will have a user id which is wildcat and feedback will be given for what for a particular course so there will be a course id and then you will define the relationship of feedback with the, the respective courses there will be a link of feedback with the user id and the course okay feedback comment and roles these are like some of the tables which i wanted to think about and uh, discuss with you guys okay this is how the database will look like in the in